Good evening, dear all, uh, dear participants who are joining on uh, Zoom and participants also who are joining on Facebook. Uh, we, are, uh, we have started a live stream on Facebook as well. And today we are happy to see you again. Uh, thanks for joining. And today we have a very nice speaker. Uh, let me introduce our speaker today. We have uh, Nathan Doan, who has taught English for nearly 20 years all over the world. And he spent two years in Dushanbe, Tajikistan, and loud learning about the culture, people, and especially the food he, there. Nathan loves to spend time with his wife and three children and enjoys playing sports, reading books, and exercising. He currently is teaching at a language school in California, but hopes to teach overseas again in the future. Uh, Nathan is going to talk about how to teach grammar in an, in, in an interactive way, and he's going to share his rich experience with us. So welcome, Nathan. Uh, welcome to our Thank webinar. You. And now we are giving the floor to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. It's it's great to be with you today. I'm so excited. Um, uh, when I saw the opportunity to, to meet with you all, I was very happy and very excited uh, to be with you. And I'm looking forward to our time together. And um, yeah, just a, just a little bit more uh, about me. Um, yeah, like, like Nasiba said, I spent two years in Dushanbe and I really loved it there. I had such a good experience there. I got to work with a lot of, of English teachers there uh, through the English uh, Language Fellowship Program. And wow, I just really was so impressed with you guys and, and think you all are just amazing. Um, and really, uh, yeah, it's such a privilege for me to, to be with you today. And um, I hope to, to hear from you a little bit too, and just hear kind of your experiences about teaching there. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to today. And this, this topic about grammar is, is a fun one. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to talking about that. Um, yeah, if you can, um, I, I would love to hear from you uh, on, the, on the chat. So if you can uh, type something on the chat, that'd be great. Um, you can ask your questions. Um, Sometimes I might ask you all a question and you can uh, respond uh, on the chat. That would be awesome. Or you can, uh, there's the reaction button on Zoom. Um, so you can do the, you know, the thumbs up or, you know, uh, the clap if you like something. Uh, I like to see the reaction. I like to be interactive. Um, so <clears throat> uh, the, the one thing about... Uh, you know, one thing I really miss about Tajikistan a lot is the food. You guys, the food is so good there, right? I love the food. Um, Osh in uh, Kurtab. Wow, Kurtab is amazing. And uh, Sambusa, Sambusa Kaduki was my favorite. I would eat Sambusa Kaduki almost every day. Um, so what, tell me, just let's, let's uh, try on the, on the chat. What is something you ate today? What did you eat? Uh, tell me something... Um, Tell me something you ate. Just type it on the chat. I want to just I want to know you're alive out there. Did you eat something today? Pancakes. Yes. Oh, pancakes are amazing. You had Osh. Guloro had Osh. Oh, I'm so jealous. Guloro. Plav. Yeah. Russian one. OK. The Russian uh, pancake. Is that maybe what you're saying? Um, what else? I want to hear. I want to hear more what you ate. I haven't eaten anything yet today because for me, it's uh, five in the morning. <laughs> so <laughs> I have, I'm drinking my coffee. Uh, maybe I'll eat later. Anything else that you ate today? Jigar Zirbon. What is that? Oh, that, I don't think I ever tried that. Soup, okay. Shorpo, okay, good. Sounds like there's some good food. I think there's a lot of food in Tajikistan that I didn't try yet. So I, I think I have to go back and try some of this food. I really would love to go back. Uh, it's my dream to go back. I had my family there. Fried liver, wow. Oh my goodness. Um, I had my family there in Tajikistan too. Um, I, at that time I had two kids and my wife and, um, and we, uh, our, my whole family had such a good time in Tajikistan and they all, they all talk about, oh, we should go back, let's go back. So I hope we can, 
I hope we can go back again sometime. And I, unfortunately, I didn't get to visit some of the different areas of Tajikistan like I wanted to. Mostly I was in Dushanbe. So uh, where, um, where are you guys today? Are you, are you mostly in Dushanbe? Are you in some other areas? Why don't you type for me on the chat? Where are you? So for me, I'm in California. Um, I'm in a, a city called San Jose, California. Um, okay, I see spaghetti. Um, Sambusa, did someone say how it's Sambusa? Oh, that's good. Sambusa from Facebook followers, that's great. Uh, from Iran, oh good. We have someone coming from Iran. We have spaghetti, I love spaghetti. Hujan, yes. That was one of the places I really wanna go. I didn't get a chance to go to Hujan. Another from Hujan, that's great. I heard Hujan is beautiful. I would love to go there. Cooking Plav now, that's good. That's a great thing about uh, doing uh, classes online, right? You can be in your kitchen cooking <laughs> while you're in class. That's awesome. Uh, hujan, wow, a lot of Hujan. Hoi from Iran, great. Bokhtar, okay, that's the south of Tajikistan. I didn't go there either. Dushanbe at the Russian Tajik Slavic University. That's great. Wow, a lot of you in Hujan. Smolensk. This is amazing. GBAL, oh, Horog, I heard is beautiful as well. Azerbaijan, wow. You guys are all over. That's great. Yangon, Georgia, Chittagon. I'm from Kujan. Wow, you guys, that's great. I'm, I love to hear where you guys are, are coming from. Um, yeah, so I, I wish we were together. Oh, in Bangladesh, okay, good. I wish we were together all in the same room. I think that would be really fun. Uh, to be with you guys, but but this is pretty amazing, right? That we can all uh, meet together from from different parts of the world. That's great, and um, yeah, like I said, you get to you get to you know cook your cook your food while you're in class. I had one student. I'm teaching online right now uh, at a college, and I had uh, you know one of my students. Uh, I was asking like, oh, how's your how's your father doing? His father was visiting. Um, and he's like, oh, he's great. He's right back there sleeping. He shows the camera and his father's just like sleeping <laughs> right in the background of the class. So funny. You do see people just like, you know, cooking food. It's, it's great. Um, so great. Okay, everyone. So glad. So glad. Oh, Romania. Oh my goodness. Wow. You guys really are all over. That's great. Okay. So let's get to grammar, right? So you're here to, to hear about grammar uh, and, and especially how to teach grammar in an interactive way. And that's something that... Uh, that I really, uh, when I teach, I'm really trying to, to create a classroom that is interactive. That's really my, my main goal. Um, because I believe that when we are, when the students are involved and engaged in talking, they really, um, well, first of all, they have more fun. <laughs> it's more enjoyable. And, and second, I think they learn better. I really think that uh, when we have the students have an opportunity to practice a lot, to speak a lot, to to be interactive, they're going to learn so much faster. And I've really noticed that through my years of teaching. You know, I've, <laughs> I, you know, when you're when you teach for a long time, as I, I'm sure a lot of you know, um, you know, sometimes you have good lessons, sometimes you have bad lessons, right? I've taught a lot of bad lessons. <laughs> I've taught a lot of lessons where I've learned like, oh, you know, if I don't make this more interesting are uh, more interactive, my students, they fall asleep, right? Have you ever had a student fall asleep? That's the worst feeling when you're teaching and then you just look down at your student and they're just like, you know, totally asleep. <laughs> um, that's not a fun feeling. You don't want that, right? You don't want your students falling asleep. You want them to be engaged, interactive, having fun. Um, so let me ask you a question, okay? Um, when you think about grammar or teaching grammar, uh, what do you think of? What comes to your mind? What are some of the issues? Maybe, maybe again, chat. Uh, I like, I like looking, reading your comments. What are some of the issues with teaching grammar? What are some of the hard things? Tell me on the chat. Tenses, ambiguous rules. Good. Yeah. Some challenges there. Just understanding it. More tenses. Okay, good. Contextual discussion, subjunctives. Teaching grammar is awesome. Wow, Gulchera, that's great. <laughs> Structure, tense is good. Okay. So even just understanding some of the grammar can be, yeah, how to, uh, 
can be difficult. Inductive method, wow, great. All in all, students have problem in learning grammar, right? It can be diff it can be a difficult topic, right? Um, and it's it's not e always easy to teach, and it's not always easy to understand. Um, I had to work very hard to understand English grammar, even even though I grew up speaking English, you know, as my first language. Um, I was I was not very strong in grammar growing up, and I had to really learn myself a lot of the tenses and rules. Avoid rules. I, oh, I like that. That's great. Yeah. Okay, we have a question. Um, uh, yeah, go ahead if you're if you're ready to ask a question, please. Always fun, and enjoyable. Communicative approach, passive and active voice. Yeah, right. Um, okay, so yeah, I've I've had some of those same same problems with grammar and and how to make it how to make it interesting and fun. Sometimes when you hear that word grammar you think kind of like, oh, this is, this is going to be boring, right? Just a lot of rules, um, you know, <laughs> difficult to teach. How do you make that class interesting, fun when you're teaching something like grammar? Um, that can be hard, right? So I want to, um, I want to share one a rule with you. This, uh, this isn't actually about grammar, but have you ever heard of the 100% rule? Okay, it's called the 100% rule. Have you ever heard of that rule before? Um, and I'm guessing that I'm guessing <laughs> you've never heard of that rule because I just made it up. Okay, so that's why you've never heard of that rule. <laughs> I just I just created the rule. Um, so this is my rule. This is my 100% rule. Okay, um, the 100% rule is this. Okay, this is this is kind of my uh, a main point. Okay is that you, you want to have 100% of your students, okay, all, all of your students, right, uh, engaged in your lesson, okay, 100% of the time, okay? So, so basically what I mean is you want every one of your students involved in the lesson during the whole lesson, okay? To yeah, total engagement, that's great, total engagement. Um, that's really my goal. Um, so, you know, I see I have, you know, even in this kind of webinar, I have 30 participants right now. I want everyone involved. I want everyone typing. I want everyone thinking. I want everyone uh, involved and engaged in the learning process, right? So when I'm teaching grammar, I'm really thinking about that. How do I get every single student involved for the whole lesson? And a lot of that uh, requires some planning and requires some, some thinking through uh, beforehand. How do I do that, right? So that's, that's my goal. And when you do that, when you have that 100% uh, engagement, 100% rule, um, you're gonna, your students are going to, at the end of class, are gonna say, wow, we're already finished? Oh, that went so fast. You know, that was fun. You know, um, I love hearing that. I love when students say that. And, and no students are going to fall asleep in your class, <laughs> right? Because they're involved, they're engaged. So we're going to talk a little bit. How do you do that? Okay. The other thing, uh, who's ever heard of the 90% rule? 90% rule? Again, you probably haven't heard of it because I just made it up. It's the 90% rule. Um, okay. So the 90% rule is this. Um, when we're teaching grammar, here's the problem is that often as teachers, we can spend a long time, uh, trying to explain the grammar, right? Because it's, it's difficult. There's a lot of rules. Like you said, the tenses, um, it, it, it's kind of a lot of stuff to, to present, right? And we can, we can spend a long time presenting, um, actually too much time, I think, in my opinion where uh, we should give 90% of the class time for the students to be talking and to be practicing and to be um, trying to, to use the grammar or, or, or use the new material in the lesson. And only 10% of the time should I be talking as the teacher. Okay, that's the 90% rule. Okay, I just made that up. Um, so here, here, when we have a lesson, I like to think of a, 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 an English lesson um, in three parts. There's present, there's practice, 
and there's perform. Okay, the three P's. Present, practice, perform. PPP, yes, you got it. Oh, Valer, you are you are good. Uh, so present, right? Um, I'm I'm giving the information. Triple P, I like that. I like that. That's the triple P rule. I good. That's good. Uh, so um, we have the present, right? Where I'm I'm sharing the information. Okay, I'm I'm giving you the lesson. Okay. Um, let's say uh, here. Let me let me share my screen with you real quick. Um, let's say I'm giving a lesson. Just imagine this. Uh, you see you see my screen? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So about present progressive, right? Uh, and you know we see uh, the structure of it, right? Uh, uh, you know how how we form it. Uh, let, okay. So imagine I'm giving a lesson on present progressive, right? Um, I'm gonna share the rules, right? How we form it to be verb, uh, the verb plus ing, all that stuff, right? And how to do a negative. I don't want to spend too much time on this part, okay? I could, as a teacher, sometimes I can spend too much time trying to explain all the different rules, all the different ways. Um, I wanna to try to keep this time shorter, 10%, okay? 90% I wanna to give to practice and perform, okay? So practice, the second P, I'm thinking more about um, them just, uh, just becoming more familiar with it, getting a chance to practice with how do you make it, how do you do it? Um, and, and usually our textbooks are very good at practice. They might have a fill in the blank, or um, they might have, you know, just some a simple dialogue um, that gives some practice. Okay. And then perform, maybe the students are making their own dialogue, or they're making their own sentences, or they're, they're doing something on their own where they're using the grammar point. Okay. So, so present, practice, perform, right? So the practice and perform, I want 90% of my class. Uh, the present, keep that lower. That's the first step. If I'm just talking the whole time in my class, it's not interactive and, and it's not as, as helpful. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop my sharing. Okay. Uh, does that make sense? Give me, give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. Okay. I got some thumbs up. Good. Okay, great. So that's the, we have the hundred percent rule. Everyone engaged the whole time. And we have the 90% rule. Now you know those rules, right? A 90% rule, let them be talking, let them be interacting 90% of the time, okay? Uh, those are my two rules. <laughs> okay, um, let's see, next. Okay, so one thing I, I like to do, let's say I'm, let's say I'm teaching a, a class on, uh, on the grammar of past tense, okay? So I'm doing, uh, you know, simple past and uh, regular, irregular verbs, you know, just past tense, right? I'm sure you've all, all taught about that, right? Um, just a, oh, I want to, so as I'm thinking about uh, teaching this grammar point, uh, first of all, I really want to understand it myself, right? I need to, I need to research it a little bit, maybe. I need to be familiar with the rules, even as someone who's, who's you know, English is my first language, so I have to kind of review <laughs> the rules, make sure I understand it. So make sure you're prepared, right? That's that's kind of the first step. Um, uh, second, I'm really thinking of of activities, okay? Activities that uh, they can um, they can practice with it and perform with it, okay? Um, so as I go to present this grammar, okay, I'm doing simple past. Even in even in my presenting, I want to think about how can I make this interactive? How can I get my students involved? Okay. So one thing, so when we're talking about simple past, what are we talking about? Nouns, verbs, or adjectives? What do you say? What do you say? If I'm talking about the simple past, what kind of words am I talking about? Anybody know? Uh, when I'm talking about teaching simple past, the, uh, uh, Am I, am I talking about a noun or am I talking about a verb or I'm talking about adjectives if I'm talking about the simple past verbs? Yes, Anissa, you are the winner. Good job, Anissa. Yes, Mirzo got it too. Yeah, verbs, right? I'm talking about verbs. Okay, so I'm presenting about simple past, okay? Here, here's just a, a, a little idea. In, instead of just telling them all the information about it, okay, right away, I'll tell my students, okay, I want everyone to tell me a verb you know. And maybe I'll give an example just to, to make sure that they know what verbs are, right? So for example, go, okay? 
or C, okay? Now I'll tell my students, now, now everyone give me a verb, okay? And then I'll uh, write the verbs all on the board, on the whiteboard, okay? Or if I'm doing online on the Google Doc. So yeah, oh good, you're giving me verbs right now. I love it, okay. <laughs> yeah, everyone give me, yeah, go ahead, give me some verbs. You guys wanna be interactive, that's great. Go ahead and give me some verbs, I'll, I'll write them down. What do we have? Oh, we have celebrate, I love that verb. Go, see, appreciate, learn, be, finish, watch, run, and oh, you guys are so, you guys are like the best students ever if you were my students. <laughs> Good. Uh, adore, wow. Listen. Good. Any other verbs you know? Pay. Oh, that's a horrible one. <laughs> oh, unless pay attention. Pay attention is a good one, right? Hook. Okay, good. Buy. Yeah, create. You guys are all so good. Any other verbs? Enrich. So good. Translate. Yes. Okay, good. Devote. Oh my, your verbs are just amazing. Encourage. Oh, Parvina, I know you. Understand. Hi, Parvina. Share. Whoa, okay. Behruz, nice. Read, write, teach, procrastinate. <laughs> Good. Uh, this is present. So I'm still actually in present right now, but I'm doing it in an interactive way. Okay, that's enough verbs. Good job. I can't do any more. <laughs> um, so even though... Um, even though I'm in present, it doesn't mean I can't be interactive. So instead of, instead of uh, in my presentation, writing the verbs myself, I asked them, hey, tell me some verbs you know, right? So now you see already, you guys were excited to write your verbs, right? You're still writing them, save. <laughs> you were excited to write your verbs and that's fun, right? It's fun to kind of be involved, right? To, to say what you know. Um, and so, so now you were involved in that present part. So now I got my verbs, I wrote them all on the board, okay? Now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna teach them about, okay, this is how past tense, you know, you know, think about yesterday or think about this morning, right? Um, and, then, and then we can start practicing, right? We can start making some sentences. Um, you know, I might, I might then to, to help with the, so then I, uh, okay, sorry. So then I presented, I shared some of the rules, you know, the ED, I'm not gonna tell you guys, cause you guys, you guys all know. Um, so I shared about that now, okay. And so now I wanna to go to practice, right? So I did the present, now I wanna to go to practice, okay? So another way that we can practice with this is uh, with a dialogue. So I like using dialogues because it gets two people talking to each other, okay? So when we, when we have our class and we, uh, you know, if it's just me, me talking and, and we have, you know, a classroom full of people, only one person is talking, right? But if I break everybody up into pairs, now at least half the class is talking, right? Uh, and half the class is listening and then, and then you can go back and forth. So go, breaking up into pairs is so important. Um, and I like to let, you know, again, the 90% rule, 90% of my time, I wanna be, have them be in pairs, groups, um, or, or at least having a, a chance to, to interact uh, with the lesson. Um, so now I'm gonna break them up into pairs. And especially for a class that's maybe a little bit lower level, um, I want to give them an, a really good example of, of this dialogue, or I'm sorry, of this uh, lesson. And, and I, I think uh, dialogue is a great way to do that. And so often I'll just create a dialogue myself, very simple. Um, and it could be, a, if they're very low level, you know, they can just read the dialogue and, and, and just very simply practice that way, right? Um, if they're more advanced, they can take the dialogue and they can add more to it. Um, so here, I'll just, uh, let me share my screen again. Um, here's a dialogue I did the other day. I was doing something about, you know, the past tense. Um, and so I just, you know, have A, B, and I just wrote this very quickly. It wasn't very, it wasn't, you know, very complex, but just a, you know, hi, you know, Malahat, how's it going? And then Malahat would answer, hey, Nathan, it's going well, how are you doing? Um, I'm great, what did you do last week? Okay, so now here's a question about, that's gonna give me past tense, right? What did you do last week? I went to, and so, you know, maybe we talked about the verb go and went, and so now they have a, a chance to practice. I went to the market and I, you know, what, drank 
T, you know, something they can, they can put in whatever information they want. So now I'm giving them an activity that is going to uh, cause them to use the simple paths, right? It was really fun or boring, right? And then they, and then so on, right? So you give them a dialogue. This is, this would be kind of the practice, right? They're just putting in information into this dialogue. It's pretty, they can, you know, easily figure out how to, how to do it. Um, and then perform, you know, maybe they're, they're just really creating their own dialogue or their own conversation, right? Um, you guys doing okay? Any questions? You're right. If you please uh, don't hesitate to ask. Okay. And um, <clears throat> another way I can do it is uh, if I have, let's say I have a whiteboard or, or chalkboard um, is uh, maybe I want to practice on a few verbs in particular. So let's I'll on the whiteboard, I'll write go, you know, on this section, I'll write come this section, I'll write encourage. And then I'll have my students come up to the whiteboard and write a sentence on the board, um, you know, at different places. It, it helps if you have a big whiteboard um, uh, and they can write on the board or I'll, I'll get a piece of paper, right? And each paper will have a different verb on it. Okay, so let's say I have, where are some of my other verbs? Motivate, you know, maybe one paper just says motivate on it. And um, another paper says involved. Another paper has a different verb on it. And then you have to go to that, the students will have to, you sp spread the papers around and the students get up, go to that paper, write a sentence, go to a different paper, write a sentence. So what you're doing is you're getting them to stand up. They're moving around and they're having to, to try to make a sentence with that verb, right? So do you see how this, doing it in this style, it causes interaction, it causes them to move, it causes them to have to create and think. Um, it's so different than just me talking to them, right? And they're maybe taking notes, but it's really so much better to get them involved, get them moving, right? Um, uh, okay, so good a question about critical thinking. I, th I really think this kind of idea of, of an interactive lesson, it's, it doesn't really have to be only about grammar. It could be about anything. Um, and so if you have more advanced students and um, you want to focus on critical thinking, well, then you could do the same idea with um, some, some questions, right? You, maybe you have some kind of deeper questions that you want to ask. And maybe you have a question on this piece of paper. You have a question on this paper. They go around, they answer, and then you have a discussion about it. Um, so there, there are ways, I think, it doesn't only have to be about grammar, but get students moving, get them talking, right? Moving, talking, that's always a good combination. Um, the other nice thing about having an interactive lesson is that as a teacher, um, when I'm, when I'm teaching, okay, when I'm presenting, I don't know if my students are understanding or not, right? I don't really have a good way of, of knowing, do they get it or not? Just because I taught them doesn't mean they understand, right? <laughs> you probably had a lot of lessons where you're teaching, you think you're doing a great job. Uh, you thought you explained something very well, but still the student didn't understand, right? They, they didn't get it. But when you have them do these practice and perform, you get to hear them. You get to hear how are they doing with this uh, lesson? Are they understanding it? Are they using it correctly? And now you know what their level is. You know how they're doing. And then you know, okay, I need to teach this a little bit more. I need to explain this a little bit more, right? So it really gives a teacher a good idea of, of how, uh, how your students are doing, okay? Uh, how do you prevent adver present adverbs of past simple? Um, so let me, let me look at another thing. Um, so we talked about the dialogue, right? Um, now, let's say I did the, um, I did the dialogue, okay? Now, I, now I'm going to tell them, uh, uh, to do another activity. And, and this activity I like to call the walk around and listen, okay? The wall, <laughs> you can call it the wall, the walk around and listen. Um, and so this activity is, now it's gonna be perform, okay? So I'm going to, I'm going to give, um, I'm going to give my students a question to ask, okay? So it could be something like, uh, what did you do yesterday? Or it could be, where did you go last summer? Some kind of question that's gonna be about the past tense, right? Um, and so, and I can write that question on the board 
um, or if I'm on the computer, I can write it, you know, um, and they can, uh, then they're going to go and they're going to find a partner and they're going to have a conversation. Okay. In English, <laughs> uh, using, using that question, right. Using that grammar, where did you go yesterday or what did you buy or where did you go last summer? And then they're going to have a conversation. They're going to practice with their partner. Um, and then, and so imagine you have a class of 30 people. Okay. Um, now you have 15 different uh, pairs talking about this question, okay? Um, and then as a teacher, I'm gonna walk around uh, and listen, okay? I'm gonna listen to their conversation. I can't listen to everyone at the same time, but I'm gonna walk around and just listen to little bits and pieces of each one. Yeah, monitor. Oh, Voler, you're so good, Voler. Uh, I'm gonna listen to each one uh, as much as I can. And let's say I hear, I'm listening to a conversation and I hear someone say, Yesterday I go to the park. Okay, so I heard uh, I heard a mistake, right? I go to the park. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write that down. Uh, let's say I'll have a piece of paper or no, a notebook. I'm gonna write down I go to the park. Okay, and then I go to another conversation and I hear someone say, um, you know, uh, yesterday I uh, eaten uh, osh. Okay, okay, that's a mistake, right? Yesterday I eaten osh. Okay. I write that down. Um, okay, so then I'm getting a list of mistakes. It's I, it's very easy to hear mistakes, right? With with language learners, they make a lot of mistakes, no problem, right? So I'm, I'm writing down the list, okay. And after maybe 30 seconds, 45 seconds, I'll tell the students, okay, switch, find a new partner, right? Just keep it moving fast, right? Because if you leave them together, they'll they'll just say like, we're done, teacher, I'm done. You know, they're always saying I'm done. Uh, but you make them switch, make them practice again, keep it moving fast. And I'll say switch, find a new partner. They find your partner, they practice conversation, they practice conversation. Let's say you go for five or 10 minutes. Now they each student has spoken hundreds of words, hopefully, right? They've gotten a chance to practice it many times. Now I have a list of mistakes that I heard them say because I walked around and listened, okay? <clears throat> and so this list is very valuable because now I know exactly the mistakes they're making. I don't have to guess where their weakness is. You know, I don't have to think, oh, that word's probably hard for them or this one they probably know. I don't have to guess. I know exactly what their mistakes are, right? So now I can really teach them uh, about these, you know, these mistakes they've made and that's really gonna help them because they're, they're making this mistake. So that, now I can help them. So now I'm going to, yes, you may, you're not gonna hear all the mistakes and it's impossible, right? But you'll hear, you wanna find some mistakes that you think are probably common, that probably many people are making this mistake. And it's really not hard um, to find that. And you're not gonna get everyone. And it's, it's okay, They're, making mistakes is normal, right? It's part of language learning. You don't have to catch all of them, uh, just catch a few. And, and we, can't even, we can't even process too many at the same time anyways. Um, so now I'm gonna write the mistakes on the board for everyone to see. So I'll end the, I'll end the exercise, everyone can sit down. Now I'm gonna write the mistakes on the board. And I'm not gonna say, oh, do you see, you know, Nathan made this mistake, or I'm not gonna make, make anyone feel bad for making a mistake. Um, so now all the mistakes are on the board, okay? Um, let's see, uh, I wait until the end. Uh, so someone's asking, do you correct them right then? That would just take kind of a long time. And I want everyone to see the correction, okay? And to think about it. So I write all the mistakes on the board. Okay. So let's say I have, you know, 20 mistakes I've, I've written on the board. Now I don't want to just tell them the answer. Okay. That's too easy. I want them, I want them to, uh, let's say they're sitting down I say, okay, turn to your partner. Everyone get a partner. You're, you're, turn to your partner, look through the list and together try to fix the mistakes. What do you think? So now they're thinking about it, right? They're like, they, maybe someone sees like, oh, it says I go, that's wrong, right? We say I went, right? So they're talking about it now. They're trying to fix it together. And it's amazing actually working together. Often they can find a lot of, a lot of um, uh, the corrections themselves, right? So I give them some time, but then there maybe some time, some, sometimes they don't know. And then so at, after a few minutes, then I'll go over it together and I'll, uh, I'll explain, you know, okay, so past tense of go is went, right? We don't say go, it's an irregular verb, it's went. So I would say, I went, and then maybe I'll call on someone real quick. Okay, where did you go yesterday? Let's practice that real quick again. And, and so now I'm making this grammar lesson a lot more interactive, a lot more interesting, a lot more fun, right? Um, so this, I found this activity, I do this activity almost every single class. I love this, uh, students love this activity because it focuses on their mistakes and they get a chance to talk a lot. 
I love this activity because, um, you know, it's, it, it really shows me what they know, it shows me uh, where their level is at. Um, so that's the wall, the walk around and listen. So we have the 100% rule, we have the 90% rule, we have wall, right? Those are, uh, oh, and the th triple P. Someone made, someone made that up, triple P, I like that. Uh, okay, so let's look at something else now. Um, okay, the other thing um, that I like to do is um, one way to keep students really engaged and, and keep them, I guess you could say, on, on their toes. That means like they're ready is to randomly call on students at any time. Um, so if my students think I might call on them to ask them a question, they're always ready, right? They don't wanna be, they don't wanna be caught not ready. Um, so I might, I might just say, you know, I won't, I won't actually do it for you guys, but I might say, okay, Malohat, tell me, where did you go yesterday, right? So Malohat Usmanova, where did you go yesterday? Um, and then so Malohat, she has to be ready, right? She's got to answer. And now everyone feels like, okay, I got to be ready for an answer because uh, the teacher might call on me anytime. Um, and that's, a, that's also a way to kind of keep them in, in the lesson, right? Um, and I, let's say I call on, on, uh, on Malohat and, and, and maybe Malohat's not ready to answer. I don't, I don't make her feel bad or about not being ready to answer. Don't, don't shame them, you know, just say, okay, I'll give Malahat a little bit more time. Let's call on someone else now. I'll, I'll come back to you, Malahat, right? So to keep it fun, keep it light, but, but, but be willing to call anybody anytime. Uh, and, and, and they'll, they'll be more ready during the lesson to answer, right? And again, that's kind of part of the 90% time that they're, they're speaking, right? You call on them, they got to speak, they got to be ready. Okay. Uh, any other uh, questions or thoughts? You guys doing okay? Um, I met in an authentic textbook. I love to help instead of I love helping. So after love, either one. After love, you can do the infinitive to help or gerund helping. Both of them are, are good. So both of those are fine. Peer correction. Yeah. So that's kind of peer correction. Valera is kind of what I'm talking about when I have it all written on the board and they help each other and they try to, um, you know, go through it. When they're doing the conversations um, together, I, I, don't really, I don't really want them doing peer correction too much. I want them just to focus on having a conversation, not to worry so much about the other, their partner's mistake as much. Um, uh, practice or perform. Practice or perform, they're kind, of, they're kind of the same almost to me. Like I don't think, oh, this is practice, this is perform. But uh, probably a conversation like that where they're just talking is a little bit more perform. I think of uh, practice as more um, structured. So like that dialogue with the fill in the blank, often uh, activities in the book are more practice oriented and perform is more like you're just creating something on your own. Um, so you do need to practice, you know, do more structured things first before they're able to just go on their own. Um, but then they kind of, they can be very similar too. So that's a good question, Valer. Okay. Um, what else? Okay. Let's say I'm teaching about, um, uh, let's say I'm teaching about nouns, count nouns and non-count nouns. Okay. Um, I'm sure you've all done that lesson before. So following that same kind of thing we did with the verbs, right? I might just say, okay, give me some nouns. What nouns do you know? And I'll explain, you know, I'll give an example of a noun. Okay, here's a noun, car, right? Um, now you, give me some nouns. Tell me some nouns you know. And, and students love to tell you what they know, right? They love to say like, you know, the words they know. Um, so you're giving them opportunity to talk. So give me some nouns. Okay, okay everybody give me nouns. T type in some nouns. Do you know any nouns? What nouns do you know? Radio, yes, bread. Car, mother, good. Mug, oh, you saw my mug, didn't you? Yes, that's right. Do you like my mug? It has coffee, I need coffee. Milk, bag, good. Teacher, yes. Watch, great. Okay, so I say I get my list of nouns, right? I, I wrote them on the board, okay? Now, with your partner, Decide which nouns are count nouns that you can count and which nouns are non-count nouns. Try to figure it out together, right? So, so now I, I have them working in partners again. I'm not gonna just tell them right, right away. That's very boring and then it's not very interactive. Work with your partner. Which ones are count and non-count? What do you think? Okay, now, now that you have 
groups again trying to figure out which ones are countable, which ones are non-count. They're trying to guess. They don't know, but they know some of them. Yes, fruits. Good. Um, and then and then we'll come back together after a minute. Okay, what do you think? What about fruit? Is that countable or non-count? What do you think? Okay, let's talk about it, right? Um, and so we'll go over it, and then I can kind of give more a little bit more presentation about it. Um, and so you see, you see how I already made the present part a little bit more interactive, right? Then let's, uh, you know, I, I want to then help them make sentences with count and non-count. So maybe I'll write a few, a little, many, much, right? Some of these different uh, words we use with either count or non-count. Okay, now I want you to uh, make a sentence with many and, and a noun, right? How many brothers do you have, right? So I'm, 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 I'm getting them to, to practice it in an interactive way, right? So the same, same idea, it doesn't matter what the grammar point is, you can kind of follow a similar thing of, of uh, interaction, right? Getting them involved, not spending so much time just talking um, and really getting them to talk, getting them to talk 90% of the time. Um, okay, so teaching grammar isolation is so difficult. Some approved sites. Um, I, I don't really, I guess I don't really have a specific website uh, that I know of that just has, um, you know, I, I suppose you can do a Google search like grammar activities or, or English language activities. But for me, most of my, most of my activities involve either with partners or small groups um, in anything that you can think of that they have to use that grammar in, you know. So maybe, yeah, if we're doing nouns, uh, nouns, count nouns, non-count nouns, you know, maybe have them make a list, you know, for a shopping list. Okay. Okay. Make a shopping list and, and now do a dialogue like you're at the, at the market. Okay. So like, you can just think of anything like that, right? Any kind of situation that they're going to have to use uh, that grammar. Uh, another thing let, uh, you could do, I mean, there's, there's so many, uh, why isn't ice cream countable? So ice cream, uh, uh, ice cream is usually not countable, but when you say un ice cream, you're actually meaning like an ice cream cone, but we don't say the cone part. Um, it's just like you can like coffee, like I need, I need coffee. Coffee is usually non-count, but sometimes like an informal language, I might say a coffee. Um, but usually when I'm teaching that, I'll probably just say coffee is non-count. Um, I need a cup of coffee, right? Or a bowl of ice cream or a, a ice cream cone. Uh, so yeah, the, the count and non-count have a lot of, a lot of rules to it. So don't spend too much time, you know, just on the rules, but get them practicing. Uh, coffee, my lovely now. That's great. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Um, so yeah, I guess the heart of what I want to say is get your students talking, get them engaged, get them interacting, have them talk to each other. And as the teacher, listen to their conversation. And then you can, you can teach grammar so much better when you know exactly what their mistakes are. Don't spend too much time just talking at the beginning. Uh, get them really talking, um, and then through their mistakes, you can teach. You can you can go back to present. Let's say you're teaching, uh, you know, the count non-count. You presented it. You gave them a, a dialogue. Now they're practicing, and you keep hearing they're making a lot of mistakes. Okay, I'm going to go back. I'm going to share again. You know, okay, we add the s on plural nouns. I might present again. Then I practice again. Right. Um, how to involve passive shy students. That's a great question. So often passive or shy students will, will be more active when they're just with a partner or in a small group. You know, sometimes if you call on them in the big group, they might not be able to answer. They might be scared. Be gentle, be kind, give them more scaffolding, give them more, maybe just feel, uh, easier ways to get involved. Uh, with a partner, um, encourage them. Maybe you can partner with them sometimes and, and to do it in a very nice, gentle way that they can be more involved. I find that shy students, after some time, they start to feel more comfortable and they'll get more involved when they get comfortable with the class. Um, you know, so that's, that's a good thing to think about. Also, you're going to have students who are really advanced and are really fast and they're going to finish, you know, the activity very fast. For those kind of students, you want, you want to think about those students too, right? Because 100% rule, 100% of your students, right? Some are going to be slow, some are fast. So for the fast students, I'm thinking about them beforehand too. And I'm thinking, I want something prepared for them for when they finish, okay? Let's say they're working on activity. They're so good. They finish it. 
okay, I don't want them just sitting there, you know, putting their head down or, or on their phone, right? Ah, oh, the phones. Um, so I want to give them something to do. I want to say, okay, I need you to write 10 sentences uh, with this grammar while you're waiting for everyone else to finish. And then I'm going to check your sentences, right? Keep them engaged too. Um, so you got to kind of think of different levels too and have a, I, usually I just have them write sentences is a great way because that, that's kind of a good challenge for them. Um, you know, write some sentences and I'll, I'll check them at when you're done. Uh, but don't just uh, don't just sit there waiting, right? Be engaged. Um, okay. Any other? Do we have any other questions or thoughts? I hope I was clear enough for you. Um, we we have got a question from the Facebook uh, oh, good. participant. Uh, she's asking uh, if you can share any methods for uh, teaching grammar for secondary learner uh, students. Oh, okay, so like a younger like a younger age is that what that means yes. yeah i think the i think the principles are really are really the same for adults or kids uh, you know i think kids even more need to move around need to be active they'll get they'll much more quickly get bored right <laughs> they'll much more quickly um you know they don't want to just sit there and listen right they want to practice so i think i would get them i would get them moving more um, I would get them, I would, you know, if I can get some paper, if I don't have whiteboards, maybe get some paper, put it on the walls with uh, different things that they have to go walk around and write uh, something on, you know, um, you know, use their, use their interest, you know, maybe they like art, they like to do art, you know, um, get them drawing something and talking about it, right? Uh, charades, you know, let's say I'm doing present progressive, you know, and, and, and so I'll, uh, I'll, have one person like, you know, okay, what am I doing? Right. Okay. Then everyone says, Oh, you are drinking, right? What am I doing? You are talking on the phone, right? Do something like that, like a game, like charades, right? So games, songs, uh, something that where they're moving around, right? That's something it's, it's not, not only for, for kids, it's for anyone, for anyone. Um, you want them moving around. You want them interactive. TPR, Volair again, Volair is amazing. Yeah, so give them physical response, right? Get them involved, get them up out of their chairs, get them talking, any age. I think it just, it doesn't matter. I think it's for any age. Uh, but for kids, yeah, for kids, you might want to think about more games, uh, songs, um, get things that getting out of their seats. And, and yeah, you need, sometimes they might get a little wild. So you got to control them a little bit too. But, but yeah, that's a good question. Good. Anything else? It's question time, right? Is that right? We do question time. Yeah. Okay. Um, if there's no other questions, I can kind of keep talking to you. Um, another thing I like to do is something um, like, let's say I'm doing a dialogue, right? And I want them to, uh, talking about, you know, what they did yesterday. Um, I might make two lines. Let's say I have 20 people. I'll make, have them make two lines, um, you know, 10 people on this side, 10 people on this side facing each other, okay? Um, and now you're going to have a, a dialogue with the person in front of you, okay? Maybe just a short dialogue, uh, maybe 30 seconds, right? And then, and then I'll rotate them. So have one person from the line move around and everyone rotate down. Now you're going to talk to a new person again for 30 seconds. And that, that repetition of just kind of continually uh, practicing is really helpful. How to increase group work productivity. Um, yeah, so let's say I'm putting them in a group, groups of four people. Um, that's a great question. Um, for me, it, it really is about clear instructions about what they're doing. Um, and I, I wanna make sure in the group that they're talking a lot. I wanna make sure that they're interacting. They're not just quietly sitting there. So I'm walking around and I'm really encouraging them. Okay, talk to each other you know, work it out, figure it out, have a conversation. What are you doing? You know, I'm, I'm really active in class. I'm never just like sitting at the, at the desk in the front of the room. I'm always around, I'm moving around. I'm getting, I'm always trying to get people to talk, to interact, right? So as a teacher, that's part of your job is to kind of uh, coach them to, to keep going, to talk, right? Um, so I think that would be a good way for group work is you're right there with them, moving around, making sure they're on task. Um, how do you present the form and meaning of a structure? So I think, um, you know, for me, I really research the grammar point as much as I can, you know, just online, Google <laughs> or my grammar book. Uh, if I have a grammar book, I'll try to understand the grammar point, understand, understand how it works. Um, 
for me, it helps just to have a lot of kind of example sentences, you know, so let's say um, doing present perfect, you know, um, which I think someone mentioned before, you know, I could say, you know, I have lived in Dushanbe uh, for 10 years, for example, right? I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a lot of example sentences that, that really kind of put it into context for me that make it make sense. Um, between new and already learned tenses. Yeah, good. Um, one thing that you can do, um, let's say at the end of a, of a semester or a quarter, and you've learned some different grammar points, something I like to do is uh, for review is, is put my students into groups and say this, okay, this group, you're going to share with the class about count and non count nouns and pre prepare a, a little lesson about that. This group, you're gonna share about present progressive. This group, you're gonna share about prepositions. And so that as a way to review after the end of a session maybe. And, um, and so that group is responsible to teach the class a, a, a minute or two minute lesson about that thing. And that kind of gets them um, uh, reviewing it too. And then when they have to teach it, they, they really learn it. Um, so is it teacher creativity to choose appropriate activities to get students involved? Yeah, to me, that's the, my main job. It's not just to, to explain something about grammar or vocabulary, but it's really creating the activities that are gonna help them learn it, right? So when I have a lesson, um, I'm the first thing I'm thinking about, what activities can I do uh, to get them involved, to get them uh, working with the language and to help them learn, right? And so some of these ones that I've, I've told you, like those are the activities that I, I usually do. Um, what if the activity does not work? Then just skip it, just go on. I've had that happen so many times. I have this plan for activity. And then for some reason, it just didn't quite work out. I make a note, this activity doesn't work, <laughs> you know, at the end of, at the end of the day, don't do this anymore. I've done that so many times. That's just part of learning, right? As a teacher, you learn what works, what doesn't work. Um, and you quickly move on, right? You quickly kind of just, that's part of the fun about being a teacher is you have to just be flexible, adaptable, um, think on your feet, try to do something else. Right. Um, how can we involve in studying process of graduate or school? Um, I'm not exactly sure uh, what, maybe you could clarify that question a little bit. I'm not exactly sure studying process. I think they are. Participant wants to know uh, how to involve the students who are, uh, I mean, graduate students, right? Mm -hmm. The adult students. Uh, who yeah. don't really like, you know, learning grammar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think many people don't like learning grammar, right? That's kind of a, that's kind of common. So I, I think, uh, but, you know, if, if you, if people like interactive lessons, right? So even, uh, even if I don't want to learn it, if I'm kind of have to get up, if I have to, um, you know, speak to someone else, if I have to, uh, be responsible to have a conversation with someone or a group, then I'm, I'm, I'm kind of forced to do it and I'm kind of forced to get involved. Um, and so I think, yeah, really the activities create interest and create involvement, um, whether they, whether at first they want to or not, but everyone wants to talk about their day, what they did yesterday, or everyone wants to talk about what they like, right? You can keep the topics interesting, right? Um, if I, if, you know, let's say my, you know, my students are interested in, in soccer, you know, I'm going to try to think of some soccer examples or football, or you might say football or sports, you know, I'm going to think of some sports examples, right? I'm going to try to find interesting things that they want to talk about. Um, and I can teach grammar that way too. Um, jigsaw activity. Yeah, I think jigsaw activity could work for grammar too. Let's say you want to give this group count nouns and this group non-count nouns, right? And they're kind of learn something about it and then they can share with each other. That's a great idea. I think jigsaw activity is good for any, any kind of subject or any kind of uh, lesson. Um, another thing, uh, oh yeah, Gulnar, are you, are you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, how, much, how much do you approve the interference of language one and language two in uh, teaching grammar? Using the language one? Yes, yeah, I think- I think for the for the present, you know, that's that makes sense sometimes. You know, I can't, you know, I can't use the the language one. You know, I only speak English, so I haven't done that. And so I try to make my presentation very simple. Um, so I don't think you have to, but if it, you feel like it's helpful um, and you all have the same language one and, and that and that 
that makes sense for you. I don't think it's wrong. I guess be careful that your students, you know, because sometimes I saw in Tajikistan, you know, maybe some students had that language one and some didn't. And so you, you might alienate some of them if you only use one and some people don't understand, understand you. So be careful about that, I would say. But if it, you know, in the presenting part, that makes sense. But in the practice and perform, I wouldn't do that. In the practice and perform, I'd really, I want them in English. Even if they're making a lot of mistakes, even if they say, you know, I can't, you know, just get them to practice even something simple. Um, I, I would really encourage English in that time. In the present, if, if you feel like that's helpful, then, then yeah, that's fine. Uh, later they forget. Yeah, right. So even if they learn later, they forget. I think, um, you know, just review. I think they're not gonna forget as much when they're involved and active in the lesson. When they're just listening and they're just like in the, just reading the book, yeah, they're gonna forget, I think more uh, easily. But when they're active, when they're having to play with the language more, create the link with the language more, I think they're gonna, they're gonna learn more, but you're, you're, it just takes time, right? Learning a language is really hard. You guys all know uh, it's hard. It takes a lot of work. So I'm just going to try to help them as much as I can. You know, if a class lesson is very short, right? There's only so much you can do in that time, but it, I'm going to do everything I can uh, uh, to help them learn as much as possible during that time. And then we're going to have to review and they're still going to make mistakes and that's fine. Um, direct correction is best way or recast to correct their major grammar errors in sentences. Um, I can't, I'm not going to be able to correct everything in class that I hear. But if I, if I kind of hear some to the point of what I'm teaching, especially like if I'm teaching count, non-count nouns, I'm really going to focus on that in that lesson. Maybe they're going to make a mistake with their tenses as they're doing count and non-count nouns, but I want to focus on count and non-count today, for example. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to kind of, yeah, go with that. I'm not going to correct everything. There's only so much they can, they can handle at one time. Um, so am I missing any questions? What about assessment? This, the assessment is ongoing for me. That's what I, when I'm walking around and listening and I'm hearing their mistakes, that's part of the assessment for me is hearing their conversations. Um, and it's a great assessment. Uh, and, and, you know, you can give, you can give bigger tests, you know, whatever at different times. And that's an assessment as well. Um, but for me, the main assessment is, is during their conversation time, I'm listening to them and I'm hearing, are they getting this material or not? Online teaching. Uh, so I've been teaching online for the last year. Um, and I, I've been teaching on Zoom. Maybe some of you have as well. Um, I really do this through breakout rooms. So when I have partners or groups in person, you can do the same thing in a breakout room. Um, and as a teacher or the host, you can visit the different breakout rooms and listen. And I write down their mistakes the same way. So it really works online as well. Um, in some ways, uh, I've gotten, you know, online is kind of nice in some ways too. Uh, and better, but, but um, yeah, online, I think it works great. I've, I've been doing a lot of, I've did a class of 80 people on Zoom recently. And, um, and, and I, you can do the same thing. You know, you just do breakout rooms, you visit them, you listen to their mistakes, you focus on that. Um, so I think online, it still works great. Anything else? We're about out of time, right? I just wanna say, you guys, I'm, I'm so thankful for this time to be with you guys. And uh, I'm really uh, just, a, it's a privilege to be able to, to share with you. And I, um, I hope that I get the chance to, to, to be with you someday in person. I would love that. I would love to hear more from you and your experiences. And I know you all are, um, are, are, are great teachers and um, I have a lot to learn from you as well. So thank you just for this opportunity. Uh, to let me share a little bit of my experience. I hope it was helpful to you. I hope that you could take something from this and, and into your lessons. Um, and yeah, so thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot, Nathan. So uh, it was a very helpful webinar. You shared really uh, nice teaching tips and also you've been able to respond to the questions of our participants. So thank you very much. Um, yeah. Participants, I'm reminding that we had a webinar today with Nathan Dawn and he just shared his wonderful experience on how to teach grammar in an interactive way. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we have a couple of more questions. People are asking when we are going to have our next webinar. So we set a tradition that every Thursday we are going to have a webinar. So our next webinar is going to happen on March 18th. And we have 
Another wonderful speaker, Lisa Mann. She will be also sharing her best teaching experience and successful tips for you. So please do stay tuned on our website and also on our social media pages. Uh, exactly at 6 p.m. local time, we'll be having on March 18th, our next webinar with Lisa Mann. So you probably, many of you know, know her and uh, she'll be again sharing her successful teaching tips. So thanks again, Nathan. So we definitely would love to host you in person in Tajikistan. I would love that so much. Yeah, I need more Sambusa. So <laughs> please, do come. please do come. Yeah. So we'll make a pillow for you. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you. Wow. I can't wait. <laughs> OK, uh, thanks again on behalf of all participants. Once again, a big thank you to you, Nathan, and also big thank you to all participants who actively were engaged in our webinars. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your being engaged and we appreciate your desire to uh, hook and also to better your teaching skills. So thanks a lot and have a great evening.